Imagine you're standing at the edge of a quiet, two-way street to cross safely. You just need to look left and right. Now, picture yourself in the middle of a bustling intersection with traffic coming from all directions. You have to look left, right, ahead, and behind to avoid getting hit. This is much like the difference between a simple two-arm clinical trial and a multi-arm study. Multi-arm studies are clinical trials involving more than two groups or arms of participants. Each arm receives a different intervention, and researchers compare the outcomes across these groups. Multi-arm studies save time and effort by comparing treatments simultaneously. They give us a broader understanding of how different treatments stack up against each other. Calculating the sample size for multi-arm studies is more complex than for two-arm studies because of the issue of multiple comparisons. When there are two groups, there is only one comparison to be made, which is A versus B. With more than two groups, there are multiple comparisons to be made. For example, with three arms, there are three pairwise comparisons, A versus B, A versus C, and B versus C. With four groups, we have six pairwise comparisons. The danger with multiple comparisons is that there's an increased risk of a false alarm. It's like a traffic officer at a busy intersection getting confused because there are so many cars to watch and calling for backup thinking there was an accident when there wasn't one. In research, multiple comparisons may increase the likelihood of us finding a statistically significant result from our study that is just a figment of our imagination and not existing in reality. Just as a busy intersection requires extra caution, sample size calculation for multi-arm studies requires statistical adjustments to ensure each comparison is adequately powered. Let's dive into it to illustrate these concepts. Let's say we are comparing three smoking cessation interventions to see how they perform relative to each other in helping smokers quit cigarette smoking for good. The interventions we are comparing are nicotine patches, nicotine-free e-cigarettes, and nicotine-containing e-cigarettes. Let's use the PICO framework to lay out our study so we are all on the same page. Our population is adult current cigarette smokers aged 18 years or older who have smoked at least 100 cigarettes in their lifetime and are interested in quitting. We have two interventions we are testing. The first is nicotine-free e-cigarettes in the form of vape pens. The second is e-cigarettes containing 10 milligrams of nicotine, also in the form of a vape pen. Our control group is nicotine replacement therapy in the form of a nicotine patch. In this study, we are interested in making three comparisons. The first comparison is looking at the nicotine patch versus 0 mg nicotine e-cigarettes. The rationale for this comparison is to see how e-cigarettes as a purely behavioral intervention compare to nicotine replacement therapy. The second comparison is looking at the nicotine patch versus 10 mg nicotine e-cigarettes. Here, since both interventions contain nicotine, our interest is to compare the efficacy of the mode of nicotine delivery in helping smokers quit. The third comparison is looking at 0 mg nicotine e-cigarettes versus 10 mg nicotine e-cigarettes. Here, since both interventions use an e-cigarette device, our interest is to assess whether e-cigarettes are effective in helping smokers quit, independent of the direct effects of nicotine. Our outcome is sustained smoking cessation lasting three months or longer based on self-reports. We will be conducting baseline data collection with follow-ups every 30 days for a total of six months, based on self-reported smoking status at each time point. We will determine whether respondents have successfully quit. Now that we are all on the same page about what our study is all about, let us head over to the Chi-Squares platform to calculate the needed sample size. Once in the sample size section of the platform, we select comparative study with three plus arms with percentage as the outcome because the outcome in our study is categorical. It's either you quit smoking or you didn't. Next, we enter the prevalence of the outcome in the control group. For our study, this is the percentage of smokers on nicotine replacement therapy who quit successfully. From our literature review, this is 7.9%. Next, we input our preferred option for effect size, which is simply the smallest gap we wish to detect between our treatment groups and the control group. While we have two treatment groups, we can only enter one summary value, and we want to make sure we remain conservative. Better to underpromise and overdeliver. 
In line with this principle, we can either enter the worst of the treatment groups or their average. Entering the best of the treatment groups is like overpromising. So, if we were to assume an anticipated quitting prevalence of 10% in the first treatment group and 15% in the second treatment group, we can either enter 10% or the average of the two, which is 12.5%. It is always good to try different input values as part of sensitivity analysis and see how the sample size changes with varying assumptions. For the sake of our calculation, I enter the average value of 12.5%. Next, I enter a desired level of confidence as 95%, enter the number of arms as 3, which includes the one control arm plus the two treatment arms. I then enter my desired power as 80% to keep the right balance between having as many people as needed to detect differences but not having so many that my study is no longer feasible based on my resources. Next, I enter a response rate of 50% to account for the possibility of attrition across my study arms. The implicit assumption here is that similar rates of attrition occur across the study groups. At the bottom, I can check or uncheck the box to indicate I wish to perform multiple comparisons. As I will be doing pairwise comparisons across all groups, I check this box. The Chi-Squares platform automatically accounts for multiple comparisons in the background so you don't have to do any complicated math by yourself. Our sample size shows we need 2,149 people in each of the three arms, or a total of 6,447 individuals for the entire study. You can click on Show Reference to see the formula used and the various inputs that went into it to ensure that all the statistical adjustments needed were done automatically to make sure our study is adequately powered, statistically sound, and capable of yielding meaningful insights. Congratulations! You now know how to calculate the sample size for a multi-arm study on the Chi-Squares platform.